Today we'll explore three PTC cameras, the Data Video PTC 285, the 305 and the PTC 145. And the PTC 285 and 305 offer 4K resolution and powerful zoom capabilities that is excellent image quality for conferences, live events and broadcasts. And the PTC 145 on the other hand provides HD resolution in a compact design that's ideal for small spaces and mobile setups. All three cameras feature auto tracking, which is the focus of this video. And to demonstrate that, we have set up a slider with me in the background, and we'll see how these cameras can track it. But before we do that, let me introduce Skahoe's approach to PTC control. For this, I have brought the PTC Extreme with me, it's right here, and we'll use that to control these cameras to turn on and off auto tracking, and also to see how we can adjust all the other settings we find in these great cameras. The screen in front of me is Reactor. That is the web UI coming straight out of the PTC Extreme. And you see the home screen. This is where you can rest assured which devices are set up with the uh, controller. And right now you see PTC 40, um, 145, 285 and 305 are all connected to. They have this IP address, they have a device ID that is a way for the system to identify them. And over here we have this camera selector, which at first may look a little bit redundant, but it makes sense because Reactor is powerful enough to actually control multiple controllers and have many setups of cameras. So sometimes you want it in a different order than the devices we have here. So there are some reasons for that. The first thing that we see in this camera selector that I now brought up is the ability to change the label. Because if you look at the controller, you see that they are uh, the buttons on the controller, they have all displays above, and that is one of the fantastic features on Skyhoy products, that is we label everything dynamically, so the controllers are truly dynamic and reconfigurable and universal in their approach. Now, we wanted to change the name, and uh, I find it better to at least show the model name, and you see the moment that I change this, immediately that label is updated on the controller itself. So let's just quickly do this, so it's much easier for us to follow through this demonstration, the name of the cameras. Actually, there's a pretty cool thing I want to show you as well, which is preset recall. Now, if I select the PDC 305, this guy, and I press this preset, you see it goes somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but um, at least probably homing position, right? So I can actually just move it a, a, a little around here, press and hold, and now I'm storing a preset. Now, if I recall another preset, it goes here, and then it goes back to the preset location I had just be a moment ago. But I can label that preset. Right now it says preset one. And I just want to show you how cool that is. And it goes for every PC camera we have. We can go in here, we can name the preset differently, and um, close up. I'll just call this close up for the fun of it. And it says close up in the display. So now that's a little bit of a glimpse into the universe of Skyhoy controllers and how you can configure these things and why this camera selector table, settings table is really essential. In this menu, we can select the home menu, which is where we have put features we assume is going to be your favorites or the most important ones. You can also reconfigure that in the UI, but you see here iris, uh, which focus mode you're in, the white balance mode and so on. And you can of course change that for each of these cameras. So as I'm changing the cameras, you see these, change, these settings are changing around because each of them will have different settings, obviously. So um, we, if we go to exposure, you see shutter speed iris and so on. We'll come back to that in a moment, but I want to take you down to auto track. And that menu, of course, contains settings for the auto tracking features, which you find in every one of these cameras. There's an indicator on off. Let's just go over here. So it's, it's on in this case. It, it also has auto tracking enable disable. Currently it's off. This is why I could actually use the joystick to control the camera manually. Then we have other settings, and we'll explore these in just a moment. So I guess the first thing we would like to do is to just see how we could work with the uh, PTC 145. That is the camera number one here, and you see this is the, the uh, HD camera, small compact form factor, and I'm just like moving it around as you could expect. And now I'm pointing it over at the setup here where I am floating forth and back on a slider. It has now caught on to my torso moving on the slider and it is zooming in 
and trying to frame me in uh, on the slide and follow as I go along. Now, all these settings you find here has to do with how quickly are we adjusting, how are we basically cropping the subject, the size, and maybe in this case I should choose full body because it seems like it's struggling too much with the close up, but now it's, it's trying to capture that full body then we could do half body, so we'll see it zoom in a little bit. We can also um, let it know that we want to have the subject on the right side, ideally in the picture. So it's allow it, now it's like more in the right. We could also do left, so it's trying to frame me on the left side. We can also choose how fast are we going to adjust. So we would probably see more aggressive adjustments here, while like just yes. And if we go, go slow, then we'll see more slow adaptation to the movement of the subject uh, in the frame. So that's the basics of how these cameras are following along. So I suggest that we change over to the PTC uh, 305. And uh, obviously the colors are um, kind of much worse than we had just a moment ago, but let's just do the framing here. Okay, so I just helped it a little bit and then we will turn on auto tracking. So we'll see the camera is now starting the presenter tracking. I find that this camera is um, having more smooth operation than the HD version. Uh, maybe, maybe so. I don't know if there's a difference or if it's just me who haven't played uh, enough with it. And it's also most important to just highlight that these cameras are working pretty much in the same way. They have, in this case, also a fast tracking mode. I can turn that down to a slow mode if I want it to be like more gentle in his movement. You see what's happening right now? I don't think I could even reach that kind of movement precision with a joystick, which has very much to do with the uh, Visca protocol, which is uh, a little bit uh, low resolution on the uh, movement details there. Uh, let's just put it in the middle. I find that is pretty reasonable. Once again, I can also do uh, right, uh, center, left uh, framing. So now I'm trying to put myself on the left side in the frame here. And um, I have a customized framing in this case. So actually with the customized framing, um, there's a number here associated with the framing that will determine you know, what kind of cropping I'm getting. And now you see the higher this number is, the closer I'm going to get to the subject. So that customization is possible. But again, you have a close up setting, you have a half body setting, and I am getting sick and tired of this poor, lighting of the scene. So let's just look at the white balance and see if we can find some better mode. There is, of course, options like using the, the one push, which has apparently previously been used. This is the outdoor white balance, which uh, actually is pretty good for what we're seeing. And now we have indoor, so we are using outdoor um, temperature studio lighting here. If we go to the manual, obviously you have the ability to change gain settings here, but that is probably just gonna make matters worse. I think going to outdoor will just be fine, but I also wanna introduce you to the exposure. So in the exposure menu, we are currently at auto, but I can change that over to um, one of the other modes here. I wanna hit manual actually. So if I could just have manual mode, now uh, we are able to uh, adjust it a little bit more to our liking, maybe like this, okay. But that's just to show you how auto tracking and other settings that you would normally concern yourself with on a high quality controller like this one, where we have basically implemented every feature these cameras have, not just auto tracking, but all the manual features as well are available in these menus we can combine that with managing the auto tracking features. The indicator can be turned off. So if you don't wanna see that on your output, to be honest, I don't know if it's on the output of the camera itself. Now we're just following the web UI here. We have uh, also uh, which subject you uh, you want to, to track. So if there's multiple subjects in the scene, you can, you'll have another box pop up for the, the second person or the third person, and you can decide which one the system is supposed to be tracking. Okay, so that's basically auto tracking in data videos, lineup of wonderful cameras, 4K, HD, kind of work the same, same settings you have here. It's all broken out on your PTC Extreme in the standard configuration that comes with um, the PTC Extreme using Reactor, which is the software running in this panel. No computer in between. We talk straight to these cameras. And uh, of course, if you wanna set up other things like tally from your favorite video switcher system, or if you wanna do routing control so you can have a screen in front of you that will show the signal from these cameras as you select them, 
all that can be done in this UI. We have plenty of videos that shows it. It's the same workflow, but essentially for each camera in the camera selector, you would pick which uh, tally uh, channel, like an input on a switcher, and which uh, routing input on a video router or uh, aux channel on a switcher is being used for each of the cameras to facilitate these features. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to our newsletter for updates. Below in the description, you will find links to all of these wonderful resources.